The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest, running for a cure. Relay for Life Ambassador Julie Smith opens up about her own battle with cancer and what she's doing to help others on today's show. Plus, Pastor Mark Lance will jumpstart the new week with a powerful motivational message called The Beautiful Symphony of Your Life. And in Israel up to the minute, Middle East correspondent Brian Bush is in Jerusalem with an update on Iraqi special forces and all that's going on in and around Mosul. Good to have you with us today. A lot of good stuff coming your way. And You Chuck, look like you just got back from Special Forces. <laughs> I just, well, not quite. Got back from uh, Colorado and had a great uh, week out there with Keith Passan, GM from mm -hmm. uh, TV40 down in Indianapolis. So every few years, this is three years last, uh, last time around, but uh, went out, did a little bit of elk hunting and... Really, that's just carrying a, a lot of weight and uh, hiking through the mountains <laughs> using your rifle as a cane, basically. Yeah. Well, well, he's forgetting about something so obvious. I mean, this beard, this black and white, yes. salt and peppered beard. Yeah. Tell me, what does your wife think of it? Uh, she, my daughter loved it. Okay. My 15-year-old daughter, Annika, loved it when I got home. Mm -hmm. My wife has, has seen it before. And uh, she was a little concerned, but she's going to give me some space. And, and really kind of getting a jump start on No Shave November, or uh -huh. No Shember, as it's called. Uh, it was started in 2004 uh, by some guys, in, six guys, I think, in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, they started doing this in 1998 as a means of raising awareness for usually prostate cancer or mm -hmm. any, any type of cancer specifically. And in that first year of 2004, uh, $40,000 were raised. Last year, $126.8 million wow. were, were raised for, uh, for cancer research and awareness. Well, I hope you can help raise a lot of money for uh, cancer research we'll and awareness. See. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I, look forward, I look forward to when you have it fully grown yeah. uh -huh. and we can bring back out the uh, the pictures where we'll split the screen and half of it yes. will be Stefan and half of it will be Sebastian <laughs> Cabot <laughs> from Family Affair. That's that's going way back there. It is, yeah. but I mean, I'm sure Jason uh, Mubal will be or five able to folks pull that this might remember up. That. Oh yeah. no, oh yeah. no. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about the Cubbies? Cubbies are still alive. Uh, they won last night 3-2, mm -hmm. so Cleveland's still leading the series three games to two. Now you have to go to Cleveland mm -hmm. and, and try to win two games on the road, and nobody's been able to win games six and seven on the road uh, in a series like this since, I think, 1979 with yeah. the Pirates. So it's 103 years since the Cubs last won the World Series? Or 108. 108, 108 and, and the Cleveland Indians was? 68 years. 60, so either it's historic. Either way, it's historic, mm -hmm. and, and baseball is is blossoming in the World Series. The, the ratings are up. They're as mm -hmm. high as they've been in a long time for baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see. It's been, the games have been entertaining. I'll say that. Quick quote here from Cody Allen, uh, veteran relief pitcher yeah. for the Indians, says he's learned how to keep his priorities in order while playing on the biggest stage in baseball. Quote, my relationship with Jesus Christ is kind of what allows me to keep things in perspective, Alan said. You don't want to add pressure in these situations. You walk away from it all at the end of the day. You understand that this is a game. Mm -hmm. And it's a platform that the Lord has given me to use to reach other people. At the end of the day, it's perspective. And we want to understand that we are here for a purpose that doesn't include playing baseball. <laughs> That's right. And such a, an excellent point that he makes that is simply a platform mm -hmm. in which he stands upon to share the good news or to demonstrate that, to walk that out so mm -hmm. that uh, when they're not doing so well, he doesn't get angry and throw things Right. In. So whether you win yes. or whether you lose, That's it's right. still an opportunity to be a witness. Because we don't know that God is a Cubs fan or a, base, hey, a football fan. Hey, there. <laughs> okay, there's a real chunk <laughs> freebie right there. <laughs> Coming up. Well, we'd love to hear what you've got to say. We want to connect with you and you can connect with us and share your thoughts on Facebook, Twitter, even live at lacy.com. That's the email address that comes right here to our set. World News with Chuck Freebie is next. It's the last day of October in 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Speaking at a rally in Albuquerque, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump says the FBI believes they have found all the emails Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton allegedly deleted. He referred to it as the single biggest scandal since Watergate. Thousand emails. <laughs> 
How do you get to 650? I think that's called the mother load. Clinton's use of a private email server while Secretary of State has dogged her campaign since early last year. The third powerful earthquake to hit Italy in two months spared lives Sunday but struck at the nation's identity, destroying beloved landmarks across a mountainous region of small towns. Nearly 8,000 people were moved to shelters or hotels following the quakes last week, and that number is rising rapidly. The worst damage was reported in Norcia, where two churches were destroyed. The 14th century Basilica of St. Benedict, built on the traditional birthplace of the founder of the Benedictine monastic order, and the Cathedral of St. Mary Argentia, known for its 15th century frescoes. Turkish police detained the chief editor and at least eight senior staff of an opposition newspaper today. It's a continuing crackdown on dissenting voices in that country. The editor-in-chief, the paper's lawyer, and several columnists were taken into custody following raids at their homes. The detentions at the left-leaning and pro-secular paper, one of Turkey's oldest newspapers, come amid accusations Turkey is using the state of emergency imposed following a failed military coup in July to clamp down not only on alleged coup plotters, but on all government critics. Some members of Venezuela's opposition have begun meeting with the government in an attempt to defuse that country's political crisis, but 15 parties belonging to the Democratic Unity Alliance are boycotting the session that began Sunday night after authorities canceled a recall referendum aimed at removing Socialist President Nicolas Maduro from office. Maduro arrived at a museum in western Caracas to begin the talks along with the former Spanish president, Jose Luis Zapatero, and a Vatican mediator. Speaking of the Vatican, Pope Francis arrived in Sweden today to mark the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. It's a remarkably bold gesture, given that his very own Jesuit religious order was founded to defend the faith against Martin Luther's reforms five centuries ago. Now, while the visit initially raised eyebrows, the Vatican and Lutheran Church both insist today's event is no celebration of Luther's revolt. Rather, they say it's a solemn commemoration to ask forgiveness for the schism in Western Christianity and rejoice that relations have improved in the last five decades. Still to come, Brian Bush joins us with the latest on Iraqi forces advancing towards Mosul. But up next, Relay for Life Ambassador Julie Smith opens up about her own battle with cancer and what she's doing to help others. We're right back with more Harvest after this. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. The Sea Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help the Sea Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1 800 365 3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1 800 365 3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. On April 11, 2013, Julie Smith was diagnosed with a 0.96 millimeter cancer mole, which is about the size of a thumbnail. Three years later, she was declared cancer free, and today she raises thousands of dollars for cancer research, education, and hopefully a cure. Welcome to the Harvey Show, Jean. Thank you for having okay, me. Okay, so before we start this conversation, I also like to say this is not Stephanie, as you can see. Melanie is better looking <laughs> right. than Hello. Stephanie. And then Stephanie. <laughs> now, Melanie is my colleague, and and she works in Pulse FM radio station, our, our sister radio station, and uh, she's also a cancer survivor. So thanks Correct. for joining me on the conversation with Julie. So take us back to April 10th, 2013, when life was going well for you, and then the next day you found out you had cancer. Tell us about that. I was actually really nervous uh, still because April 8th is when they took the moles off my back, mm -hmm. and there was two of them. And so I was still kind of nervous, and that just curious and I kind of had an idea because I knew that the symptoms for melanoma um, was itching and bleeding and I knew that mole was doing that 
mm -hmm. and that. So um, when I did get the call on April 11th, I was at work, and my doctor himself had called, and I just, he said, Julie, he says, the one mole is, it's, it's negative. He says, but the other one, the one we were concerned about, it is positive. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And he says, we're going to have a nurse call, and we're going to set up for surgery. And I said, okay. He says, we got to get this out. I says, yes, we do. <laughs> right now, please. <laughs> right now, yeah. Yesterday would have been great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, was it considered small? Yes. Is that considered a small? It was small mm -hmm. and that, and he, we caught it in time, which was wonderful. I didn't have to go through the chemo. I didn't have to go through the radiation. Therefore, I was blessed with that. It was hard for me to, when you hear the word survivor, that's hard for me to take because I didn't go through the chemo. Mm -hmm. I didn't go through the radiation. So when I look at a survivor, I'm looking at a survivor that has gone through that, that has gone through that stuff that is... Oh gosh, I don't know how to but explain it. You had it to go, go through it too because you had to hear the words, you have cancer. Yeah. You survived was, that moment. That is something that no one ever expects to hear in right. their lifetime. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting better at it mm -hmm. and that. So. so you didn't have to undergo any radiation no. or chemotherapy. Or chemo. So what did your treatment consist of? They basically did the surgery mm -hmm. and um, took out, uh, like they said, a thumbnail and that. So I have. The scar in the back, and um, but it was uh, it was it was terrifying. So I mean, you there's know, there's no other way. Even though it. you didn't go through chemotherapy, there's something that goes on in your mind when oh, you yeah. hear the words "you have cancer." So how did you walk through that process? Because there are people who are watching. People call our international mm -hmm. prayer line all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, asking for prayer for healing for cancer. What's like? What's that like? Because I don't know what it feels like to it's, have to go through that. You do. You you go through the process of where you 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 do. Your thought goes straight to death. I, at least it did for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, what can I do that will make a difference? Because I am a person that wants to make a difference, and wants to help other people, and that. So. When I found out um, with what had happened to me, I knew it was more important that I need to get more involved with American Cancer Society doing the Relay for Life and that, because um, my best friend had passed away from melanoma. She was 38, and she passed away in May, on May 16th, 2011. And on the day of her funeral, I went to the funeral, but right after the funeral, I went to our relay, our local relay place, and uh, relayed, and at the luminaria ceremony, that's when it got me, that I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I do more there, but then when I got diagnosed, it was, okay, you really gotta do something here. You've gotta let people know that people gotta wear sunscreen, because I did the tanning. I did the tanning beds laid out in the sun. I didn't put sunscreen on. I didn't even put lotion on. I didn't put nothing on and that, and uh, that's what I get for not doing that. <laughs> but you began to fight back I with did. a vengeance, I, yes, and I did. so you became a team ambassador for Relay for Life, working with the American Cancer Society. My uh, Melanie says that you are the queen of fundraising for I, cancer awareness <laughs> and education. Tell Very us about true. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to take care of that one part, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, basically, when I do for the fundraising, um, I just start, um, last year, we I started up with the dance, doing a dance for a cure. Okay. I love to line dance. I, that is, I love wow, it. Wow, I, I wish so, I had some oh music. Oh my gosh, I love to line <laughs> dance. And um, so we go out to, um, the, it's called the BK Club here in Mishawaka, but um, anyhow, they have worked with me to where we have the dance. So last year, we had this dance. The first year, we raised $4,448. This year we did have another dance. It was October eighth, and um, it, we raised a little over twenty nine hundred. And that there was a lot going on and stuff that weekend, but still it, it was awesome. And then um, just going out doing um, the give back nights, and doing that with uh, certain restaurants. And then the home, um, the home. Uh, I'm trying to think here, like, uh, like get your uh, tastefully simple. Mm -hmm. and home parties. Yeah, home, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and so we did. I did what is called jewelry in a candle is a new thing that is out that I did a fundraise with them. Well, I know you also um, connected with Melanie. Melanie, yes. tell us about the Pulse FM's Night um, for oh, Cancer man. Cure. In yeah, we have, a, we have an night. event that's called One Beautiful Night. And mm -hmm. when I was diagnosed with cancer, one thing that I realized was in, in an instant, I needed to be surrounded by people that were encouraging and uplifting. And so I found out real soon who not to talk to about cancer mm -hmm. and who to talk to about cancer. And another thing that was so important to me and a lifeline for me was music. And it landed me on Pulse FM. And so throughout the years, this year we did our fifth event, uh, One Beautiful Night, where we just bring people together who are walking through cancer. We have right. people like Julie who nominate someone going through cancer. Julie was with us last year and the year before because she knew two other people that were going through it. Mm -hmm. And she brought them, and it's just a night of oh, really good. celebration and honoring and and encouraging people that are walking through that road. It was awesome. So what was that like for you, Julie, to sit there and to be with other people who had gone through what you were going through at one time? It was, it's um, memorable. It's, uh, it's a feel-good feeling mm -hmm. in that. It's because uh, my sister-in-law right now is battling um, wow. uh, early stage two breast cancer. And she had her last chemo just before uh, the One Beautiful Night. So um, I got to surprise her and I took her to this one this year. So you get and a then, chance to raise funds for not only breast cancer awareness, but of course October's Breast Cancer Awareness right. Month. And so I know you must get out there and really cut a step with your dancing. Oh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I make sure I let people know mm -hmm. that, and that's what I wanna do. But beyond today, today is October the 31st, and then so this campaign for breast cancer awareness will go away until next year. But why is it so important to you to you know, to do this year round and to help people and to bring awareness. Why personally? Because it's, it's all cancer. Mm -hmm. That's what Relay, American Cancer Society, the Relay for Life, that's what Relay for Life is. It's not just one particular cancer, it's all cancers. And everybody that has gone through this, has gone through the, um, that is a cancer survivor, are survivors and we want to celebrate them. Would you just look into your camera? I There's know. someone who's struggling with cancer right now. Would you offer words of encouragement to that person for me? I suggest that you get, um, just reach out to God mm -hmm. because God is, he is your life savior, um, your family and your friends. Um, I encourage your family and your friends to reach out to your loved one that is battling this horrible disease because as a cancer survivor, we need you. We need you, we need, we need God, and we need you guys with us always. And um, just, we need your support. If we don't have that support, we feel alone. Nobody wants to feel alone. So please reach out to your family member, your friend, whoever's battling this horrible disease and love on them. Well, thank, they, they need you. Thank you they so much, you. Julie, <laughs> for sharing your story and sharing those words of encouragement. If you are battling cancer, give us a call. We can pray for you. The number is 1-800-365-3732. And for more information about cancer, early testing, research, education, go to RelayForLife.org. Coming up later, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's Motivational Minute. We'll be right back. This family just arrived from South Sudan. They've fled conflict, violence, they've suffered great trauma as well as loss. That's why we need your help to give a promise to these children who are refugees that they might have a future and that they might have a hope. We need you to act today. There are 50,000 children that we need to add to Every Child Every Day program in this year of 2016. That's why it's so important for you to contact us today. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin 
vitamins, and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system. That's mineral concentrate, omega-3, Vita Sprouts, and Sol you see an incredible value for only $59.95. And if you act now, shipping is free. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from Making Healthy Choices. That's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com. It's Monday and it's time for your life to become a symphony. I love to hear the sounds of the various pieces of an orchestra come together in complete harmony, making an unforgettable melody. It's true, music soothes the soul and takes us to another place in time. But the same can be said of your life as well. When what you say is in perfect harmony with what you do, your life becomes a beautiful symphony, literally taking people to a place they have never been. All of us have known people whose life is out of sync because their actions don't match their words. They say they love you, but then turn around and gossip. They say they believe in the company, but then turn around and do things that fit only their personal agenda. You see, your life becomes a symphony when what you say matches perfectly with what you do. So on this Motivational Monday, it's time to tune up the instruments of your thoughts, your words, your actions. Make sure they're in harmony so when people hear the melody of your life, they like what they hear. Go out, let your life make some beautiful music today. Everybody, the developments in Syria are more and more alarming. Over the weekend, Syrian rebels have united and opened up a new front in Aleppo, and the fighting has spread. This amidst claims of a chemical attack by the rebels upon Syrian government-held residential areas. Additionally, more than 40 people were killed in shelling of a government-held area, including at least 14 children. The rebels have effectively deployed numerous suicide car bombings, along with heavy shelling, fracturing the government's lines of the city's western edge. In Iraq, Iraqi special forces leading the fight in for Mosul have inched closer this weekend to coming into contact with the actual city. They are now one mile away, and with each village taken by the Allied forces, the noose around Islamic State tightens. But it is notable to point out that the defenses and damage being done by Islamic State is increasing. And so too is the humanitarian threat. As advisors are saying, once those special forces reach the city's center, it will start the exodus of up to one million residents being held there by Islamic State. In Yemen, Saudi-led coalition warplanes bombed a prison in the port city of Hodada, killing 60 people, including inmates. The United Nations is decrying the war in Yemen as 370,000 children are said to be at risk of severe malnutrition. Half of Yemen's population live in hunger, and an estimated 1.5 million children are malnutritious. And lastly, in Jerusalem at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, unprecedented renovations have taken place. The marble slab over the bench where Christ was said to have been raised from the dead has been lifted. Under that slab was a layer of rubble. Under that rubble, a smooth, simple, stone slab with a cross on top of it and underneath that a layer of white silt removing that silt displayed the actual bedrock of the tomb which is one in the same with the floor of the rotunda to the church of the holy sepulcher and the walls of the edicule itself i'm going to have more on this story later on in the week friends the harvest show continues right after this Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. We've got a challenge and we've got an opportunity to send Bibles around the world to people who desperately need their own copy of the Word of God. And you can help today 
by calling 1-800-365-3732 or going to lacy.com. It just takes $5 to send one Bible. So take that basic number and multiply it as best you can. Maybe it's 10 Bibles you want to send for $50 or 20 Bibles for $100 or even a whole case of Bibles. That's 36 Bibles in a case for $180. Now we've been talking about focusing on particular nations uh, like Honduras, Nicaragua, Uganda, uh, South Sudanese refugees that are living in Uganda, but there's more that's happening as well. Uh, we've got 10,000 uh, uh, Action Bible New Testaments and 50,000 copies of the story of Jesus Christ ready to go to Zimbabwe, but we need your help today. So dig deep and do what you can to sow the best seed, which is the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Think about it for just a minute. For the price of a, a drive through lunch, or a big grande latte, whatever, <laughs> you can put the eternal word of God in someone's hands. So send one, send 10, send 20, do what you can to send as many Bibles around the world today through Lacey Broadcasting. Imagine a world where every man, woman, and child had a Bible. There'd be more love, more compassion, more peace. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Help us spread the word by giving to Lacey Broadcasting. We're teaming up with Feed the Hungry to get Bibles into as many hands as possible. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. We need your help to send 100,000 Bibles to the people of Nicaragua, Uganda, and Honduras. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Any amount will help. Please don't wait. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at LaCie Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacie.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.